You're Jefferson. Yes. I'm Hamilton. The Hamilton. Alexander. Your servant. Yours. I read your Federalist papers when I was in France. Brilliant. You've given me a great deal of pleasure. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Troubles? God, yes. You have a pleasant voyage home. It seemed forever. Of course. Have you accepted the Secretary of State? Yes. My congratulations. We must work in concert. I'm such a stranger here, I shall lean on you. I'm afraid it's I who need your help. Mr. Jefferson, it's enough to make any man who loves America want to weep. Oh, forgive me. I shouldn't burden you with this. It's a matter of my own department. Well, if I can be of any assistance. It's often been remarked that it's given to this country here to prove once and for all whether men can govern themselves by reason or whether they must forever rely on the accident of tyranny. An interesting thought, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, God, yes. We live in an era perhaps the most important in all history. An interesting thought. An awful thought. For if it is true, then we dare not fail. No. But we are failing. We haven't that much foreign credit. The paper money issued by the states is worthless. We are in financial chaos. The galling part is that I have a remedy at hand. The solution is so simple. A nation's credit, like a merchant's, depends on paying its promissory notes in full. Now, I propose that the Federal Treasury pay 100 cents on the dollar for all the paper money formally issued by the states. Our credit would be restored instantaneously. Uh, Mr. Madison spoke to me briefly of your bill last night. It seems there's been some speculation in this paper. And he fears... Oh, Madison. I loved that man. I thought so highly of that man. I swear I would not have taken this office except I counted on his support. Now he's turned against me. Well, Mr. Madison has a good opinion of your talents. But this speculation... I don't want his good opinion. I want his support. Will you use your influence? I've been away six years. I'll need time to study the facts. There is no time. Three or four weeks. Three or four. For God's sakes, man, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? The North is about to secede. Secede? Hasn't the President told you? No. Unless my bill is passed, there is every prospect the Union will dissolve. I'm aware there's a great deal of tension here. <laughs> Walk in on a session of Congress tomorrow. I see evil on both sides. However, it seems to me that if the Union is at stake, reasonable men sitting about a table discussing this coolly should arrive at some compromise. Have dinner with me tomorrow night. Delighted. I'll invite a friend or two. Mr. Madison? I can't promise anything. He's bitterly opposed to your plan. I have a way to sweeten the pill. The cost of living in New York has become so unreasonable. There's talk of moving the capital. Yes. It's already been promised temporarily to Philadelphia. Give me my bill. And I can promise Madison the nation's capital will go to the south permanently. Now, I was born in the West Indies. I have no local preference. But for the sake of the great man, I would like to see it go to Virginia. Well, I'll bring you together and sit at the table to see you don't shoot each other. <laughs> Fair enough. You see, Colonel Hamilton, we must never permit ourselves to despair of the Republic. My dear Jefferson, if I haven't despaired of this Republic till now, it's because of my nature, not my judgment. <laughs> Your address? 23 Maiden Lane. 23 Maiden Lane, that's 7. Make it 7.30. You two gentlemen have met. Yes. What impression did the Spanish ambassador leave with you? Like all the rest, they regard us as a contemptuous joke. Well... We shan't despair. Huh? 7.30. Excellency. A remarkable young man. Yes. They call him the Little Lion. <laughs> the Little Lion. Yes, I can see it. Shall I review my report?